All right, mates, how's it going? In today's video, episode three of Blood and Honor by Chris Metzen. Let's go. The following morning, Tyrion got up quietly so as to not wake his wife, got himself ready, slapping his armor on and grabbing his warhammer and stuff, then made his way to the stables to grab his trusty steed. As he'd said in the last chapter, he had no intention of sitting around doing nothing. It was time to take care of business. What are you doing? I'm going to investigate the tower's ruins, Arden. If the orcs plan an invasion of my land, I'll find proof of it myself. Great. Then I'll settle up and go with you. I don't wish to have company. This is something I must do alone, my friend. I don't think that's such a good idea, Tyrion. What are you trying to prove? Heading off unescorted so soon after you... My what, Arden? My defeat. Arden then looked at the floor and shifted uncomfortably. I'll be back in a few hours. Just try to keep an eye on Bartholus while I'm gone. I have a feeling he's going to do something stupid. And then, without any more words exchanged, the Lord Paladin spurred his horse and buggered off. After a few hours, Tyrion arrived at the ruined tower where he'd fought the orc several days earlier. He knew it wasn't the smartest move, approaching an enemy's encampment without any backup whatsoever. But he just had a feeling, some gut instinct, that this orc was alone and there was nothing to worry about. Oh. Tyrion turned to see the aforementioned orc sat on a nearby rock. The creature seemed calm and poised, but its axe lay within easy reach, just in case. However, rather than shitting himself and grabbing his hammer, Tyrion took a few steps towards the beast and did a little chest bump thing. And to his amazement, the orc raised a stiff hand to its brow in return. This is how you humans do it, is it not? Bloody hell. It speaks understandable words. What? Did you think my people survived this long in your world using brute strength alone? Your kind has always underestimated us. That's why you lost the first war, I think. Tyrion just kind of stood there, absolutely dumbfounded for a few more seconds until finally... I must now. Did you pull me from the tower and lead my horse back to the road? Yes. Why? Why would you do that? The orc considered this for a moment, and then responded. You have great honour for a human. That much was clear from our fight. And no honourable warrior deserves to die like a trapped animal. It wouldn't have been right to just leave you there. Besides, I've seen enough death already. Tyrion stared, shaking his head. This was mental. His entire worldview was currently being shattered by what was happening right in front of his eyes. As a paladin, he developed a certain empathic ability, allowing him to sense the emotions of others. And whilst his brain wanted to believe that this was a trick, that this orc was full of shit, he could sense that it was being sincere. Well then I suppose I should thank you then. Um... I trick human. You may call me I trick. Well, thank you, I trick, for saving my life. The orc nodded, and then there was an awkward silence for a moment. I'm uh, Tyrion Fordring. I should tell you, I trick, and I'm lord of this land. Your presence here upsets many of the people I'm entrusted to protect. <laughs> I'll wager they slept well enough before you found me. I've lived in these woods for years, human. I made great sport out of evading your scouts. Only reason you found me was bad luck. Perhaps. But your being here still creates a serious problem for me. My people hate your kind, Eitrig. Your race brought nothing but misery and chaos. How could I possibly allow you to stay knowing what your people have done? I've abandoned my people, human. I no longer wish to pay for their sins. Why would you disavow your own people? Because they're lost. Now they were lost before they ever even stepped foot on this world. Their honour and their pride left them long ago. But I decided my duty was finished the moment my sons were killed. Are your sons warriors? All orcs are warriors, human. We know little else. Despite my son's strength and prowess, they were betrayed by their own leaders. During the last war, my sons were ordered to pull back after a particularly bloody battle. And one of our chieftain's rivals, hoping to advance his clan's standing within the Horde, countermanded the order sent my sons back to be slaughtered. Again, Tyrion's mind reeled. The fact that orcs fought amongst themselves came as no surprise, but Eitrig's grief certainly did. I realised then there was no hope. Corruption and enmity completely overshadowed my people's spirit. I knew it was only a matter of time before the Horde devoured itself from within. Where did this corruption come from, Eitrig? What drove your people to such depravity? In my grandfather's time, my people were simple proud. Only a few dozen clans, then. We lived and hunted within the wilds of our world, lived by an honourable code, and worshipped the spirits of the elements themselves. So what happened? 
A new order rose up, promising to unite the clans and force them into a powerful nation. Many of our shamans abandoned their ancient tradition and began practicing dark magics. Began calling themselves warlocks. Their shadowy powers corrupted the clans and drove them to heinous acts of violence. Under the warlocks' rule, the clans were united, I suppose. And only as a rampaging horde. And no one spoke out against them. An entire race of warriors and none of you were willing to fight. There were a few who did not submit. One of the clans led by an orc named Duratan. They challenged the warlocks openly. Tried to convince everyone else. But no one listened. What does the you humans say? Easier to fool people than to convince them they've been fooled. Duratan for his courage was exiled. And then warlock assassins killed him years later. Such is the way of the Horde. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry, Itrig, but you expect me to believe that your people truly valued honor and yet allowed themselves to be controlled so easily. Have you ever stood against the will of an entire nation, human? Ever questioned an order, knowing that to disobey would mean immediate death? Tyrion looked away. No, he'd never done anything like that. And Itrig nodded, feeling like his point had just been made. It was rumored that the warlocks consorted with demons, drew upon their infernal powers, and I believe that to be true. Darkness and hatred that took hold of my people could not have been born in our hearts. Well, it seems your people have suffered greatly then, Nitric, even before they roused the wrath of mine. Perhaps I misjudged you. We're much alike, you and I. Both old soldiers who have sacrificed much for our... We're nothing alike, human. I'm a renegade, living as an exile in a hostile land. You're a lord, loved by a free people, able to live as you wish. Fair enough. Our people are at war, Eitrig. So I must ask you, on your honor, are there any other orcs in my land? Does the Horde plan to attack this region? Eitrig sighed and shook his head. As I've told you already, human, I live here alone. I've no interest in dealing with others of my kind. I can't tell you what the Horde plans. Only assure you that this old broken warrior has no intention of assaulting your keep or making any trouble for you whatsoever. I just want to be left alone. After a lifetime of fruitless war, peace is the only comfort I have left. Okay then, I accept your words. In return for having saved my life, I will allow you your solitude. So long as you remain hidden, you may stay here. I trick them raised an eyebrow in disbelief. I think perhaps your brethren will hunt me down despite you, human. To them I'm the sum of their fears. Well, I'm their lord, I trick. They'll do as I say. I give you my solemn oath as a light-sworn paladin that your secret will be safe. None shall hunt you while I have the power to prevent it. Tyrion didn't feel completely comfortable making that sort of bold statement. It was going to be difficult fulfilling this charge if matters became complicated. Mainly because if anyone ever found out, he'd be branded a traitor. However, his instincts told him this was the right thing to do. Alright then. It was nearly dusk by the time Tyrion arrived back at his keep's stables. All he wanted to do was sleep and move on from the day's business. But as he went to enter the keep itself, a hand grabbed his arm quite aggressively. My lord, we must talk immediately. I'm tired, Bartholus. We can talk in the morning. I don't think you understand. You see, I know where you were today. The young paladin's narrow eyes remained fixated on Tyrion for quite a while. Bastard didn't even blink. I know that you know there are orcs in Hearthglen, Tyrion. And I pray for your sake that you're not covering up any pertinent information. I told you before, Bartholus, you will address me with the proper respect. As for your concerns, I've determined that my encounter was an isolated incident. That's all you need to know for the time being. Now take your hand away and let me pass before I lose my temper. Bartholus then slowly released his grip and took a step back, maintaining his intense stare at the Lord Paladin the entire time. But Tyrion didn't give a shit. He just turned his back and walked off. This ain't over. Oh, you're home. Where'd you go running off to this morning? I asked Arden, but he wouldn't tell me anything. Very intense. He didn't particularly want to lie to his wife. I went out to inspect the site where I fought the orc, Karandra. I wanted to go alone, so I told Arden not to speak about it with anyone. Karandra frowned. You went off alone only days after your attack. How can you be so reckless, Tyrion? It's not like you're a young man anymore. Tyrion flinched. First Bartholus had pissed him off outside, and now his wife was giving him shit. I've been soldiering for more years than you've been alive, woman. The last thing I need from you is a lecture on how to perform my duties properly. Well, that escalated quickly. Tyrion was obviously butthurt, so Karandra decided a change in tact was probably for the best. Well, did you find what you were looking for? 
Her change in tone kind of worked, forcing Tyrion to calm down as well. Although he had a suspicion this line of questioning wasn't going to end well either. Yes, I did. I'm convinced that my encounter was an isolated incident. We've nothing to fear from the Orcs. Well, that's good to hear. How can you be so sure, though? Oh, jeez. Here we go. I can't tell you, my love. Why not? It's a matter of honour, Garandra. I can't tell you. Garandra's body language then shifted, and Tyrion half expected lightning bolts to start bursting forth from her eyes. Of course. Honour. It's always honour with you, isn't it? Is your precious honour really so much more important to you than your own wife? Tyrion tried to answer as gently as he could. I wouldn't understand, my love. I'm a paladin. There's a great deal expected of me. There was an uncharacteristic tone of self-pity in his words, and Coranda wanted nothing more than to punch him right in the face. Oh, you're right. I don't understand. But I know exactly what's expected of you. You're expected to act like my husband, and not try to shelter me from your silly little secrets. You're expected to act like a responsible lord, and not go gallivanting off alone, putting yourself in danger. And you're expected to stay alive so that your son doesn't grow up without a father. I know. Please, trust me on this, Garandra. Everything will be all right. Are you too farty? Tyrion turned to see Talon had entered the chat, looking up at the two of them timidly. No, son, we were just discussing orcs. Tyrion had no idea why he'd just told his five-year-old son that, but he was tired and making poor decisions, I guess. Daddy, are the orcs as mean and cruel as everyone says they are? That was a strange question for a five-year-old to ask. Well, son, um, that's hard to answer. I think there are some orcs that can be good. They're just harder to find, is it? Garandra then stared at her husband in disbelief. Really? I think sometimes we need to be careful of how quickly we judge people, son. The boy seemed pleased with that answer and skipped off out of the room. And as soon as he was out of earshot, what the fuck is wrong with you, Tyrion? Why would you tell him that? 